Hello everyone. Now today we will be discussing about another term that is known as the acute interstitial nephritis. It is totally different from your acute tubular necrosis which we have discussed in previous lecture about the ATN that is acute tubular necrosis. Although the causes of ATN were ischemic and the nephrotoxic drug, same here there will be the causes of some of the drugs but that is totally different from acute tubular necrosis. Acute tubular necrosis is also one of the cause of acute renal failure and even acute interstitial nephritis in, is even the cause of acute renal failure. So there should be no confusion in acute tubular necrosis and acute interstitial nephritis which is also known as the tubular interstitial nephritis. So these two terms are different but they both are responsible for acute renal failure. Okay, so that should be clear. So there are three terms that should be very much clear and that you will encounter many times in your USMLE board and that is one is and in your daily life as well and in other exam as well. The one is renal tubular acidosis that is type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4 and that was the proxim that was the renal tubule reabsorptive defect. Okay, type 1, type 2, type 3 is not discussed, type 4 was due to high, low aldosterone level and hyperkalemic induced. So that is reabsorptive defect and aldosterone related. Okay, when it comes to the acute tubular necrosis then that was due to the necrosis that the ischemia and nephrotoxic had damaged the kidney cell, the tubular cell and that has been damaged, get ischemic, get necrosed and sloughed out. Okay, so that was a different issue. That was the necrosis of the tissue. Here it is just inflammation. And inflammation of what? Inflammation of the interstitial of the renal pack. Renal parenchyma, that is renal interstitial inflammation. So it is an acute interstitial renal inflammation. Okay. What how it is present? It is present as there will be a pyuria since there is an inflammation, there will be infection, there will be pyuria, and classically eosinophils will come. That is important of this acute interstitial nephritis or also known as the tubular interstitial nephritis. So pyuria, classically eosinophils will come and azotemia will occur after the administration of drug that act as heptane. You know about the heptane, if, if you are not know then we will revise the USMLE of your immunology and microbiology as well as if possible then I will explain the detail of immunology and microbiology from the Kaplan books and detail what has been explained in very detail as I am, I am, I am from infectious disease so you will be as I am an infectious disease expert you will I will be very easily make you understand the microbiology and immunology and we will have fun in that study okay so talking about the pyuria classically there will be sinophils and as you may occurs after the administration of drug that act as the heptane heptane is the molecule that has low immunogenic capacity but if this go and immune, re, immune reaction will trigger that you have to understand this heptane will induce the hypersensitivity and since hypersensitivity occur then they will become of immune reaction okay so that is different from your renal tubular acidosis that is different from your acute tubular necrosis this is acute interstitial nephritis where the drug what you have what you have administered that will act as a heptane and that will lead to the hypersensitivity and hypersensitivity will go and again damage the renal tubule but there is only inflammation there is no necrosis that you have to understood although this inflammation will eventually lead to the acute renal failure it is also a cause of acute renal failure even ATN acute tubular necrosis is the major cause and this is also one of the cause of acute renal failure that you have to be clear okay now what are the drugs that act as a heptane look these drugs are usually not nephrotoxic you, when you talk about acute, acute tubular necrosis we are talking about the amino glycoside we are we're talking about the cholesterol these were nephrotoxic drug here they, they are nephrotoxic drug but their action is not directly but it is acting through the immunological reaction and through hypersensitivity that is important I, I want to clear about it so like you are saying quinolones this uh, what are the drugs that in causes acute interstitial nephritis and that are the diuretics and acidic that is non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug then penicillin derivative then penicillin group and cephalosporin group then quinolones group then proton pump inhibitor sulfonyl group of antibiotic and refurbation these all are 
Although these diuretics and NSID have nephrotoxic effect, but this penicillin, quinones, peron proton pump inhibitor, sulfamide, and decompression are not actually directly nephrotoxic. But they act like they have tend, induce the hypersensitivity and then cause the inflammation of your renal interstitium and cause acute tubular that is acute interstitial nephritis or tubular interstitial nephritis. Okay, now move forward. So what and least commonly they will be occur to the sec secondary to the systemic infection like mycoplasma infection or autoimmune disease like system Jorzen Strong, that is Jorzen syndrome, SLE, systemic leukocytomatosis, and sarcoidosis. So it is not due only due to the drugs, which also can occur, but it is rare, less common, and due to the secondary infection like mycoplasma or autoimmune disease like Jorzen syndrome, SLE, and sarcoidosis. Okay, what will be the presentation? The presentation might may be that you have administration of the drug, patient may be a totally asymptomatic. Okay, when you examine the when you examine the urine, then you form, form this eosinophil. There will be eosinophil. Eosinophil cast will be there. Eosinophilia will be there in the urine. That might be your single presentation, or means they will be asymptomatic, or they will be associated with fever, since there will be a hypersensitive reaction and may be present with this acute interstitial nephritis as fever, rash, hematuria, and renal tenderness. Okay, so you need to understand that it doesn't need, they need to present with fever, rash, hematuria, and renal tenderness. They may be asymptomatic. The classical finding we will have as the classically eosinophilia in the urine, that is eosinophilic cast or even eosinophilia in the urine. And that will represent acute interstitial nephritis. Um, I have shared one of the um, scenario that if the, there, initially there was methicillin, you have heard a lot about methicillin staph, resistant staphylococcus MRSA. That methicillin was initially used and initially after using this they, they found that they are causing pain of the eosinophils. They are causing acute interstitial nephritis and because of that it was removed from the market. Okay, so that it has been removed from the market because of this side effect and this is called acute interstitial nephritis. So you have to understood. The formula to remember this causes of acute interstitial nephritis, it is benzonidrophosphate and that is uh, P's that diuretics that cause urination P, okay, NSID that is cause pain free, okay, then penicillin and cephalosporin group, okay, then proton pump inhibitor and repumpation. So there is 5P, okay, and this 5P helps you to remember what are the causes of acute interstitial nephritis. Okay, so you can remember this and this will be very easy for you. Hmm. Now moving to the forward, if you are using chronically this NSI group, NSI use, then that will lead to the chronic damage of your interstitial inflammation, that is chronic interstitial nephritis and even further progress to the renal papillary necrosis. So what is what is the renal papillary necrosis? Renal papillary necrosis is not definite necrosis. Initially we are talking about inflammation only, now necrosis has progressed. So, renal papillary necrosis is sloughing of necrotic renal papillae, okay, and that will present as gross hematuria and proteinuria, okay, and may trigger by the recent infection of immune stimulus. So, you understood about it. These renal papillary necrosis, when you will have a question about it, these renal papillary necrosis are associated with sickle cell disease or triad or acute pyelonephritis or analgesic use that is chronic NSID use or diabetic analysis. So these conditions are associated with renal papillary necrosis and you may correlate, you may need to ask or you will have a presentation of this and may say that the patient present with renal papillary necrosis. Okay. So what are the causes of renal papillary necrosis? That is sickle cell disease and the formula is SAAD, sickle cell disease of triad, acute pyelonephritis and other shape that is NSID and diabetic. You can even remember in your first aid it is mentioned that sad papa with papillary ne ne sad papa with papillary necrosis. Okay, so that can be remembered. Although the important part will be this acute interstitial nephritis, classical finding is eosinophils in the urine and you remember other caused by using this formula. Okay, there is another term that is called cortical, cortical atrophic or cortical necrosis. Sometimes what happens during the obstructive uh, catastrophe like a USA DIC or atrophic placenta and the patient in the south, then cortic, cortex of the both kidney actually get necrosed. Okay, and that necrosis sometimes happen. Oh, so you have to remember that sometimes the cortex of the renal 
renal parenchyma, renal cortex get necropt and it is usually due to the cells that does its spasm and DIC, disseminating intravascular coagulation as responsible for that and that of course in patient usually with gynecological pregnancy related com complication like abrupt placenta, you have mentioned about DIC as well and even that is very important actually. Sometimes you will have that patient will have this streps related complication, okay, like perforative placenta I am mentioning repeatedly and that will lead to the necrosis, okay. So this is all about your hematomatic interstitial nephritis, renal papillary necrosis and cortical atrophy or cortical necrosis, okay. So these are the important and you should not be confused with other terms and it will help you to solve out the problem. Although this is clinically will be very important because you may present have acute tubular necrosis after administration of drug or you may have this acute interstitial nephritis after administration of drug. And these drugs the diuretics, NSID, penicillin, antibiotics, you have, we as I am infectious disease specialist, we are using a lot of these antibiotics in every patient we have to use and so we have to keep in mind about this side effect on the kidney as well because all the drugs maximum the drugs excreted through the kidney only. okay hope this is helpful and see you next video thank you